Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Nape by Roberto Mancia. Before I do that, can you please like, subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course. It's very good, but I would say that, so have a look at it. Just go to cardmagiccourse.com, read the testimonials, sign up, have a nice time, why don't you? Lots of other people have, and uh, they're very, very happy with it. So cardmagiccourse.com, over 400 videos, live sessions every week, and we put them up on the site as well, so it's a great way to learn. Right, so this... Uh, is a, an important book, I think, uh, and which important, been very important to me because I it's kind of it it's given me a little bit of a wake up call. I did mention this on one of the live uh, streams that I did. I was with a lot of stuff to review, which isn't a complaint. It's lovely. Um, I was starting to get that feeling of banging through stuff. I was reading this book and I was getting through it and I was thinking this was last week, this was a week ago. I was thinking, well, I've got to get the review out on Monday, so I was reading it over the weekend. And I got to a point in it, and it was about halfway through, when I kind of went, stop, slow down. This is, you can't waste this opportunity, because if you bang through this book, you always say you're going to go back to it. You might not go back to it, because there'll be another book to review. So I just stopped, and I thought, well, I'm not going to review it this week. I'm not going to review anything this week. I'm going to sit with this, and I'm going to read it. And then I read it, and then I read it again, and then I started reading it a third time. And now I'm going to review it. Why did that happen? I think, well, let's go back to what it is. It's, it's a book on parlor stage, uh, parlor card magic. And I love, parlor magic is my favourite magic. It's my favourite magic to perform. I just love it. And it's my favourite magic to watch, I think, because there's just an intimacy to it. There's an atmosphere because it's an audience. Of course, I love close up and you could argue that a lot of parlor is close up. Um, but there's just something lovely about it. I just love the feel of it. It's just wonderful. And I talked about this a lot with Steve Cohen's book and there's just, there's a classic feel to doing it that feels very different to any other perform style of performance. It's, it's great. But a lot of stuff doesn't work in Parlour, and a lot of stuff we think does work doesn't work. And when I started this book, first of all, it's got an introduction by Roberto Jobby, in which he says, which I think is an important point. Um, he, he opens his introduction... Uh, by saying, there is no doubt about it, Roberto Mancia is a scholar, a performer and an author of magic who must be taken seriously. I could not agree more. And, and the fact that Vanishing Inc. have published a book by someone that I know a lot, I've said to people, do you know that his name? No, I heard of him. So he isn't like a big name. He's kind of under, he's got a following, don't get me wrong, and he's well known. Uh, he's Argentinian, so he's well known in the, in the kind of Spanish school. And he did, uh, this was published in a Spanish edition in 2011. Which makes me think, wow, this has been out for all that time and I didn't know about it. It's, it starts off with, um, with his essay on the difference, well, what makes parlor magic parlor magic? And that's when I knew I was in good hands. I kind of thought, this is someone that really is looking at it. Because a lot of stuff is sold as works great in parlor. And it does a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. Even if there's a few visual things, you can kind of communicate them in certain ways. But this stuff is absolutely built for it. He's taken classic tricks here, and they are all absolute classics. Adapted them, scripted them, put meaning to them that works really well for Parlour. And in this essay at the beginning, he talks about why that is. What is it you've got to think about that when you're thinking about Parlour magic? And it was just really interesting. It's like a checklist. It goes into the primary things you've got to think about, and then the secondary ones, and how you how you make that thing visual, or is, if you can't make it visual, how you communicate it, or how you use... Um, members of the audience to, to help you. So he, he goes into audience participation and how that's different in Parlour as well. So straight away you're going, this is someone that's thought about this. It's not just sold to me as a Parlour book. It is an actual Parlour book. And importantly, it's a book on that. And as he says, you know, to, to be able to entertain people, a whole show with just a deck of cards, which some people say you shouldn't or can't do, which is absolutely nonsense. Of course you can, because you put all that other stuff on top of the card tricks, which makes it so meaningful, which he looks at in, a, in an essay, um, a wonderful essay, a short essay in the book. So I'm just going to take you through the tricks. I don't want to give too much away, all right? Because I think you should read this. And I'm not, I know some people don't want to know about all the tricks in the book. So if you don't want to know about all the tricks, I am going to very briefly go through them because there isn't, you know, hundreds of them. Uh, I think we can do that. But if you don't want to know and you'd rather go in completely cold, then stop watching now. But don't stop watching because I want the views. Um, <laughs> so 
Eureka. Now let's talk about Eureka. I'm going to try and keep this brief, but we could be some time. This is his any card at any number. Whenever I read in a book there's going to be an any card at any number, part of me goes, not another one. Because there's going to be something that I don't like about it. Because there always is. It's either not any card at any number, which, by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with. I perform many versions um, of a card at any number or a card at a kind of any number, etc. But this is genuinely any card at any number. And it was music to my ears where he said that he struggled with the mathematics involved in a lot of the classic versions, which are wonderful. And I'm like, oh, thank you, because I thought he was going to say, and then you multiply this and then take this and subtract that, all within two and a half seconds as you're doing a shuffle of the deck. But no math, well, very simple maths. And when I say very simple, you know that, that it's very simple. So it's really simple, but... Also, no real slights. It, it has got a kind of slight in it, but not a difficult one. And this routine, I've learned it, I spent some time with it, and I performed it. I performed in any card at any number. This is unheard of me, a genuine any card at any number. I was nervous, I was scared, and the reaction was utterly brilliant. And it was a reaction for people that have seen a lot of magic that I do. And they were just, that is incredible. And then I, um, shared it on my card course i didn't teach it in detail but roberto very kindly said yeah you can talk about it in your um in your live session so i did it in the live session and talked about it there and again didn't do it that well because it was only the second time i'd done it but, but really people really liked it and i've done it a couple of times since it's a belter it's brilliant every bit of it the scripting when you say certain things every moment and there's not a bit of pretense in it it, it all completely makes sense it is worth the price of this book i promise you uh, and I know that's a cliche, but it's absolutely true. But there's lots more to go on. So then we've got the any card, any uh, the um, out of this world, which is outstanding. It is outstanding, but it's called outstanding, which is just he's just taken that trick. But what he's removed from it, again, are the bits I sometimes struggle with in a pile of position when when you've got a sort of a lot of versions of out of this world. You've got to sort of keep your eye on something, haven't you, when it's happening. You don't have to with this. It all happens out there. You can relax. You take it, and it all happens at a moment where there's no heat on the deck, and it, it's super clean. And he uses this really nice thing with, with different colored cards so you can see what colors are going to go there. But that, again, is just absolutely brilliant. Not difficult at all, and a, a real... And this is... Honestly, you're going to read this, and you're going to go, which ones do I put in my show? And then you're going to go, should I just make a show out of all of them? Because you really, really could. Uh, different Forms of Icarus is this essay I was talking about. A wonderful... Uh, essay on meaning and we've we've re all read loads of essays on meaning and putting stories into your magic and putting meaning into your magic but he's got this really amazing example of using his painting of Icarus or art artistic depictions of Icarus and it completely captivated me I read this essay three times I just thought it was brilliant and it totally he, the way he writes is it reminded me of I remember I was reading um God, I'm getting off on one now, but I was reading Gormenghast, the Gormenghast trilogy, Mervyn Peak, right? And I loved it. I loved that book. But I remember reading one, S one chapter in it that I was, remember exactly where I was when I was reading it. I was in Vietnam. I was on a coach reading this book and I was kind of hot and bothered. And I read this one chapter that transformed me, it took me to a different place. And I thought it was just so poetic. And nothing really happened in the chapter, but I just think that's some of the best writing I've ever read. <laughs> and I felt a little bit like that reading this i was kind of reading it going this is really really good stuff it's not really it's saying something i've kind of heard before but in a way that i'm really connecting with the material and these these um the art that he talks about in it just is just the most perfect example and really got me thinking and that's what we want from but we want to be able to think and we want to be able to take it we want, we want a book to take our magic further and this really was doing this for me and it's really lovely to hear art talked about in a magic book, but not in a really pretentious, oh, I'm talking about art way, in a really genuine way. This isn't, this isn't a pretentious book. And don't get me wrong, I love a bit of flowery language. I love it. It's, it's, I'm a bit of a romantic at heart, but this isn't, it's, it's not, like, not about that. It's not about pretent. It's about a genuine ways of really getting meaning across and making it hit home and making us learn, allowing us to learn. So card in uh, envelope. Do we need another card in the envelope? I've been doing it for years. Yes, we do. This is a brilliant example. He talks about this at the beginning of the essay um, about how to, again, give it meaning, but give it genuine meaning. And give it, there's a softness to this routine, which I really, really love. And there's emotion in it. It's not just there's a card. Look, it's in the envelope. It's it's a way he uses a gimmick from um, Roberto Jobby and it's based on the Paul card in envelope, the original. But it's it feels really, really lovely. He talks about memories a lot. And I'm, again, I'm not going to ruin it, but it's lovely and you can do it without spending 100 quid on a, 
on a, on a wallet as well and probably more powerful and built for um, stage and parlor. Two and a half, cards across. You see, these are all classics. And cards across is a great trick. It's a trick I've always wanted to do. I think I've now found the one I do want to do. And you get the two and a half thing is that two and a half cards travel across. And he's got this lovely kicker at the end. The problem with cards across, which it still works. There's so much by play in it, isn't there? But, and it works. It, it works. It's a wide trick. Um, great for parlor. As, as that's why it's in here. But the problem with it is it hasn't really got an ending. But when it's sort of, it has got an ending, but it, if you're not careful with pacing, it can go another one, another one, and it's travelled across. And that is the kicker, but I've seen it where that kind of happens before the ending, and it can kind of fizzle out. With well, this, you've got that lovely ending, but then you've got this, this thing that people aren't expecting is the half card travelling across, which are, even though you've kind of mined it beforehand, you kind of forget about it when you're watching it. I'll put a clip of it on, and then when that's revealed at the end, it's really lovely. Oh, right, OK, the general card. Now, the general card principle... And he talks about this Rashomon principle from, uh, from the, the, the famous uh, movie. I was going to try and pronounce the director's name, but I'm now I'm going to get it wrong. But the general card, the idea is that you take one card and it transforms itself into the three cards that three spectators have chosen. Um, and he talks about the difference between that and the universal card and, it's, and the difference between that and the wild card. So as an essay, it was really, really in, uh, important for me because anything that kind of gives me more information of the differentiations of tricks and the vocabulary and what makes this so magical. Um, and wonderful. And he says it's one of the best things you can do with cards. And it's kind of is something that is a little bit neglected, I think. Uh, yes, people do it, but a lot of people don't do it. And when he talks about it, you realise how good it is. And he's got a couple of versions of this. Um, one of them, everybody's card four, which is based on the, the one from Royal Road, and then the Lance Pierce idea, um, uh, and D -D -D Percy Diaconis, I think I might be getting that mixed up with the no, the next one's from Percy Diaconis. Anyway, doesn't matter. You read it, you'll find out. Um, but this, it's absolutely brilliant. I, I learned it and spent a good time again with this. There's the two versions I think are really worth looking at. Everybody's card four, and thanks to Diaconis. Uh, which is obviously the person I <laughs> get this one. Uh, two different ways of doing it, using the same principle, but coming from completely different ways. And again, for it's making me go, that's the trick I want to do, but of course they all are. Uh, and what does Oblivion look like is a version that is again similar using a wine glass, but blank cards, where blank cards sort of transpose with cards in a wine glass, which again is a very sort of a similar method in a way but a completely different presentation so you've got three different ways of doing the same thing which is really good food for thought and again brilliant learning uh cold germain in the wine glass principle now if you've done any uh wine glass tricks on and partly see a lot of them use a certain principle i'm not going to give it away now but it's really miraculous if you've done any kind of uh, sympathetic 10 or anything like that you know this thing where you put a and I remember Helda Guimarães um, had a version of it as well, which is just amazing, I saw years ago. Uh, I think it was Cards Across with wine glasses, where you cover them with a hanky and lift the hanky up and the cards have changed, is the basic principle. But it's got, a, again, a, a great... Um, the, the, the original version, you know, of, of this trick, uh, Carl Germain appearing cards. I've performed it now three times to people I know. And that moment where it changes, they sort of, they can't believe it. And when you're doing it, you kind of go... It's just that beautiful thing of simplicity and effect. The, the ratio is completely off. You know, very simple, completely strong effect, which is what I love about magic. Sometimes we can find, we can find ideas that aren't, you know, knuckle-busting, but have way more effect than anything that is. So, again, for those couple of tricks and, and that essay, you, you're getting so much bang for your buck with this. Uh, and then Sunrise, this trick at the end, uh, which I looked at, which uses Cy Stebbins, and I've learnt Cy Stebbins now because I've never bothered because I've, I know mnemonic. Uh, I've learnt Cy Stebbins for this trick. When I first read it through, I kind of thought it's not for me. It sounds really complicated and there's lots of thinking and a bit of maths maybe. And and when you look at it, it's it's really really good. It's kind of like tossed out deck, but not but done completely differently. Not done with the tossed out deck. People are given cards. They have a look at those cards. Have a look at any shuffle it and think of one and you get the cards that people are thinking of and then you use a similar principle from a tossed out deck at the end but but not actually uh which makes no sense at all but i think we're all used to that with me aren't we now i've had to cut this bit in because i forgot to mention the difficulty level which is very important 
So with tricks like Eureka, you the difficult levels that difficulty level is actually quite low really. There is a little slight in there, but like I said, the um, misdirection is built into the routine, so the slide doesn't have to be perfect. And that isn't to say you don't want it to be as perfect as possible. Um, but when you do something like a half pass, understand that there's not a, there's when I performed this, I realised how little heat there was on the cards when the things were happening had to happen. And there are things like shuffles you can choose to omit if you like, if you if you want to kind of just try and work the routine without the shuffles, without those little convincers. But they do make it a lot better. But again, nothing really difficult. And for all these, you know, when I performed that trick, I realised that all these bits that I was kind of thinking would be the points where I'd have to be careful. There was there was no need because there was just no heat, and I think I'm looking for all these routines. They're like that. Now, so that's pretty much that's quite light on slides. But whereas with things like one of the general card um, routines, um, you're going to have to work a little bit harder with the diaconis one. I think it was there is a, a palm from from two cards a double you're holding, so you're going to have to um, think about that, and that's kind of the most challenging thing. So it does range. There's, it's not a beginner's book. Is it's, it's definitely an intermediate book you know is a sleight of hand card magic book saying that there's a lot of routines that don't require loads of slights outstanding the out of this world doesn't require you to do much at all really so it's all about presentation um, but again even on those tricks you're going to have to be you're going to have to know the trick inside out when you uh, perform it so I'd, I'd definitely say intermediate and above for these tricks and they're the tricks and at the end the interview with Elder Gimaraj, which I will be mispronouncing. I've never really known that. It's a bit like Bowie and Bowie, you know, I can't really get the right um, pronunciation. And so I've got, a, I can't even say the word pronunciation right either. So <laughs> that's not good, is it? The interview is really amazing. It's, I can't, you've got to read that interview and then read it again and again, like I did. There is so much in there um, about performing, about magic, about creating magic, um, about uh, what is it? There's, there's a really. He starts off by saying, "What don't you like about magic?" Which I thought was a great question, but it's, it is really positive and wonderful. And I, and I think that this little book is uh, is really really special. It's a little book, and it, but it's so big. There's so much in it. There's a career's worth of stuff in it. If you learn all this stuff, that's your. You're a professional card magician. I don't think you should. You know, it's his. But but there's there's just so much gold in there. Uh, and and as you can tell. The, you know, I don't really review books that I don't really like uh, and I don't spend this much time with them and I certainly don't decide not to review something for a week because I want to spend time with that and remember why I got into magic and that's what this book did and that's what a lot of books do you know like if they're really good they remind me they reconnect me with my why why did I learn magic um, and he has communicated it in this book which is absolutely wonderful we all need to know who this person is because he's great so Roberto thank you for writing it uh, Vanishing Inks, thank you for, for producing it. And we really need to, um, there's a lot of books published in Spanish that haven't been published in English, and we really need um, to, to remedy that. So this is my call to you, uh, Vanishing Ink or who, whoever, to, to get this stuff to all of us, because um, or I'm going to learn Spanish. So there, there you go. Uh, go and buy it. It's brilliant. No affiliation, but credit where credit's due. That's Roberto Mancia, Naper which uh, incidentally means it's an old Spanish word for playing cards. Uh, have a great one. Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe. Uh, go and see uh, cardmagiccourse.com. Like and subscribe. And take care. Bye-bye.